I'm Leslie Cooper. I'm a cardiologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. There are several recent advances in the field of myocarditis that are particularly relevant to clinical care. The first is uh, in diagnosis. We have new uh, biopsy methods, uh, staining methods, which are more accurate and sensitive than the older ones that were used. And most importantly, MRI has become a standard non-invasive way to diagnose myocarditis in patients at relatively low risk. In our review article, there were several key points for clinical practice. The most important is to remember that myocarditis is an important cause of dilated cardiomyopathy and arrhythmias, particularly in young individuals. These people may have acute cardiomyopathy or in some cases chronic cardiomyopathy. We're able now to uh, non-invasively diagnose myocarditis in many cases using cardiac MRI. In those patients who have high risk features, for example, heart block, ventricular tachycardia, or failure to respond to usual care, we do recommend a heart biopsy. A second important point is that patients with chronic dilated cardiomyopathy may have an inflammatory component that would respond to immunosuppressive therapy. These patients represent a small minority of the overall cohort of patients with non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, but if they do fail to respond to usual care and have persistent heart failure symptoms or progressive cardiomyopathy uh, in the face of standard doses of ACE inhibitors and beta blockers, a heart biopsy may be indicated to look for evidence of active inflammation. There are several important points for patients who have myocarditis or who have suspected myocarditis. The first is reassurance. Most people do very well with standard care and do not and recover fully without consequence. In those patients who have persistent symptoms or whose clinical course is complicated by clinical, uh, clinically significant arrhythmias, they may require specialized uh, management sometimes with immunosuppressive therapy, those patients should be referred to a tertiary care center with the expertise to manage myocarditis specifically. Patients who have acute myocarditis and a cardiomyopathy, meaning a large, a large heart uh, with symptoms of heart failure, should be advised to refrain from aerobic exercise for a period of time between one and six months, depending on the severity. In addition to standard management recommendations for, pay, for heart failure and arrhythmias in the context of any form of cardiomyopathy, we recommend that patients abstain from uh, aerobic exercise for a period of one to six months after the acute injury. There are several areas of research that will impact clinical practice in the next few years. Most immediately, advances in uh, cardiac MRI technology will improve the diagnostic accuracy of this test for myocarditis, both in acute and in chronic patient uh, and a chronic cardiomyopathy. The second area is advances in our understanding of the immunologic mechanisms of myocarditis, specifically uh, the role of T regulatory cells, uh, effector T cells such as Th17 cells, and autoantibodies in the pathogenesis of myocarditis. Specific and relatively less toxic therapies that address these, dis, uh, auto, these altered immune uh, functions in specific patient cohorts will hopefully enter clinical trials in the near future. Lastly, uh, there are clinical trials that are underway and recently completed in patients who have viral cardiomyopathy, and they suggest that in the small cohorts of patients with specific viruses, there may be a role for antiviral therapy. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.